Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering XO Mana War. He made his first appearance in the self-titled XO Mana War, issue number one, that was released in February of 1992. His real name is Arik of Decia, also going by various aliases such as The Worthy One. And he's a Visigoth warrior that's originally from the Middle Ages, who stands six feet five inches tall without his armor and seven feet tall with his armor and also weighs 235 pounds without armor while he weighs 455 with armor. Also having blue eyes and long blonde hair. Arik naturally possesses peak human conditioning, as well as being a master swordsman and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Not to mention his exceptional leadership skills and very high moral standards. Basically being a royal gentleman warrior. But make no mistake, he can be a vicious fighter. Now, at some point, Arik acquires a powerful sentient alien battle suit known as Shanhara. And this transforms our ancient warrior into the XO Mana War. The artificial intelligence of his armor actually forms a symbiotic bond with its host, with him being able to communicate with it or conjure it whenever he wants. It has so many abilities, it's almost ridiculous to try to name them all, but I'll try to name as many as I can. Firstly, it gives him vast superhuman strength and moderate superhuman speed, reflexes, agility, and stamina, as well as extreme durability that's nigh invulnerability. And that's not to mention that if the armor or its host are damaged, it can repair itself and heal the host as well. The armor is also equipped with X-ray vision as well as many different tracking and targeting abilities. It can fly at vast speeds, including through interstellar space, and it's equipped to absorb various forms of energy, not to mention that it can manipulate various forms of energy. Being able to bend or project various gravity fields, force fields, as well as energy constructs, with one of Arik's favorites being a pure energy sword. To go on, the suit can also adapt to various hazards in the environment, and it has a limited degree of shape-shifting. It can interface with and manipulate various forms of technology, being human or alien, and it's not just a tank, because it also has a stealth mode where it can deploy various countermeasures as well as become completely invisible. And if all of this wasn't enough, it also increases its host intelligence because it's basically a huge repository of information, remembering everything it comes across. And naturally, this allows it to function as a universal translator as well. Now, around 402 AD, Arik of Dacia was the brash young heir to the Visigoth throne. One day he would lead his fellow warriors into battle against the superior might of the Roman Empire. And despite them fighting courageously, they would be overwhelmed by the might of the Romans. Arik would also be emotionally battered when he realized that his father Rolf had been mortally wounded and his beloved wife Deidre, along with some others, had been taken captive. So with the hope of saving their loved ones, Eric and a small group of warriors would attack a strange transport that they thought held their families. But it would turn out that this transport was actually a shuttle operated by an alien race known as the Vine. Unbeknownst to anyone, at this point, the Vine had already been embedded in certain positions of power around the world for hundreds of years. It goes without saying that Eric and his troops would be overwhelmed by the advanced weapons of these aliens. So he and his best friend named Gatti would be captured and taken to a Vine colony ship in deep space. But being a strong-willed warrior, Arik wouldn't take this laying down. And in his first attempt to escape, he and his friend Gatti would observe a Vine ceremony of worship for a suit of armor called Shanhara. But in the middle of watching this, they would be recaptured by the commander named Trill, then being sent to work as slaves in the Vine's deadly gardens. The years would go by, but Eric's ideas to return to his loved ones would never go away. Even after losing one of his hands and a small rebellion he had to defend his friend Gafti. But eventually, they'd have a sound plan to escape. During the revolt, Eric would manage to make his way to the ceremony chamber that he first saw the Shinhara armor. And when he approached this strange alien tech, not knowing that it had killed all those who had tried to wear it before him, he would naively reach his hand out to the armor. 
but he would be deemed worthy and the armor would flow around him, seeming to accept him as its new host and giving him extraordinary powers. Firstly, restoring his long ago severed hand. With his new might, Eric would end up decimating the alien leadership, including Commander Trill. He would then leave the colony ship and will the armor to fly him to the Roman region of Earth. But Eric didn't understand relativity and the nature of high-speed deep space travel, and he would arrive back on Earth in the modern day. He would immediately be disheartened over the fact that he couldn't fight for his people and that everyone he knew was dead. Not to mention that he also learned the vine had been embedded in Earth for over a millennia at this point, infiltrating the highest levels of government, including the British MI6. Almost 1,600 years had elapsed since he had left, so after he escaped some Italian soldiers, he would flee to the Amazon rainforest to compose his thoughts. But he wouldn't have peace for too long because the Vine would immediately dispatch a strike team to seek him out. Of course, this would prove to be a problem since the Shanhara armor was supposedly the most powerful weapon in the universe. To counter this, the Vine-controlled MI6 would end up sending the world's most prominent weapon specialist, Ninja, to bring back the armor. This would lead to the first of several good battles between Ninjak and Exo Manowar, with the two eventually coming to an uneasy alliance to battle against the Vine as well as other threats. And once these new adventures led to Eric meeting up with the Unity superhero team, he would be all in, now finding abundant uses for his newfound powers and no shortage of honorable causes to help the world. Now, for his powers and abilities, and his influence on the Valiant universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Eric of Dacia, aka Exo Man of War, a rating of 9, which is an epic rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the new Sage.